Even though it has been a very disappointing season, we just got to keep pushing and moving forward to the next matchup. And that is the Las Vegas Raiders in week seven. So let's talk about this, people. Bears versus Raiders. What is going on, y'all? Fast Force all back at it with another video talking. Of course, Matt NFL here to talk some Chicago Bears football. So if you're a Bears fan, please make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. Please make sure you're following me on all my social media platforms, guys. As always, hit the bell icon to so notified every time I drop a new video. All right. So as mentioned, um, even though the season has kind of taken a turn for the worse here with uh, the losing and the injury to Justin Fields and a handful of other players. Just got to keep pushing, right? Because the schedule is not going to stop. So this week, you got the Raiders on tap. All right, so the Bears taking on the Raiders at home. Let's run through the numbers real quick here, people. Raiders are favored by three in this one. So even though they're the road team, they're favored in this one. It is a 37 and a half over under. That is extremely low. And even though it is extremely low, I will still tell you to hammer the under because we are going to have Tyson Bajan versus Brian Hoyer this week at the quarterback position. Yeah, that is right, folks. Justin Fields, doubtful for this game. I am expecting him to be out with that dislocated thumb. And then when we talk about the Raiders, Jimmy Garoppolo's deal with a back injury it was so bad he had to be uh, admitted to the hospital or taken to the hospital. So I don't expect him to play. He was a DNP on Wednesday uh, for practice. I think it'll be Brian Hoyer under center for the Raiders. So yeah, not going to be a fun one in this one in terms of the quarterback play might be a, uh, a sight for sore eyes here. But uh, let's just See what happens here. Um, as far as the Raiders, you know, we historically think of them for the past couple of seasons as a really bad defense, but they've been pretty solid this year, folks. 11th overall, 8th against the pass, and 21st against the run. So certainly worse against the run than the pass. Now that bodes worse for the Bears in terms of, you know, the quarterback downgrade from Fields to Bajan. Uh, but I certainly think there is a game plan you can take this week that would have been different had Justin Fields been under center. Uh, and I'll talk about that in just a second here. But as far as, you know, kind of the key guys here, we still don't know if Roshan Johnson is going to be back for this game because he is still in concussion protocol last time I checked, which is interesting to me because it's been two weeks now. Um, and Khalil Herbert's obviously going to be out. He's still on IR. you got Dante Foreman. And then as far as the receivers, we should still be good there. And then we'll see about the secondary for the Chicago Bears. But yeah, overall, folks, when I take a look at the Raiders here and how they stack up with us defensively, I am looking to take a short passing game approach here. All right, that's my number one key for this game is you've got to go ahead and attack the Raiders in the short passing game for two reasons. Number one, we obviously know Tyson Bajan gets the ball a lot quicker than Justin Fields. Doesn't mean he's better than Justin Fields because he's not, but he does get the ball a lot quicker, process a little bit quicker. And we saw that last week when he was inserted in the game. And the second thing is he lacks the arm strength that Justin Fields has. And so you really can't test the Raiders deep like you want to because Bajan might not be able to make the same throws that Fields can. And we also saw that last week with that duck to DJ Moore. Now, I know he got a little bit of, uh, uh, you know, under him in terms of, you know, maybe the pressure got to him on that one, whatever the case may be. The point is, Luke Getze, let's get some short passes here to Cole Komet, to DJ Moore, to Mooney. I don't need you to have Bajant dropping back seven step drops for four verticals and try to, you know, beat uh, the, the Raiders deep. Let's not do that, all right? So let's do the short passing game and even, you know, passes to the running backs and then run the heck out of the football here because the Raiders, again, 21st against the rush. I would love it if Roshan is back for this game because I would feed the heck out of Roshan. But if he's out, still, Dante Foreman looked pretty solid last week, all right? 60 plus rushing yards. He had a little bit of juice and I would still run with him a lot. So again, you're going to have to kind of go back to the meat and potatoes football here, which is run, 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 short, quick throws, get the ball out quick, don't let the pressure get to you, and kind of go from there. That's what I would do if I am the Bears in this one with Tyson Bajan under center. Now, defensively speaking, you're going up against Brian Hoyer. That shouldn't scare you, but what should scare you is Josh Jacobs, and Josh Jacobs can run all over this Bears defense. Now, to the credit the Bears, they have been much worse against the pass than the run. They're eighth actually in the NFL against the run, 29th against the pass. So, um, you know, 
the Raiders kind of go by that, they would go ahead and test the Bears through the air. And they still have Devontae Adams, who I think he's got a little bit of squeaky wheel narrative. He's been very unhappy with his role and his lack of targets the past couple of weeks. So he might get fed. You still got Jacoby Myers there, who's also solid as well. Michael Mayer, the tight end, young tight end. He's, uh, uh, you know, kind of coming onto the scene. Uh, so he's got a little bit of a juice there as well. But for, for the most part, I believe the Raiders are going to try to run the football against us, not let Brian Hoyer, you know, throw all over the field and potentially lose the game for them. And so you got to be able to sell out and stop the run with Josh Jacobs. Yeah, obviously Devontae Adams is there, Jacoby Myers is there, but I don't trust Brian Hoyer to get them the football. I'm focusing on stopping Josh Jacobs because I believe he is going to run all over this team. Now, the run defense has been solid with Andrew Billings and company, but let's see what happens here, all right? So overall, folks, this should still, even with Bajant, be a winnable game, honestly speaking. Like, I really, really do think so. But at the end of the day, um, you know, it, to me, I, I can't in any good conscience pick the Bears to win this game when they have not shown me enough over the past couple of weeks for me to believe it, especially with Justin Fields out. If Justin Fields was in this game, I'd probably pick them to win. But with Bajan, and I can't do it. Uh, first career start for the UDFA out of Shepard, like, it's probably going to take him a little bit of time to get his feet settled, get his uh, you know footing right, and be able to uh, feel good in his first start. So I'm going to go ahead and take the Raiders in this game. I think it's going to be a pretty low-scoring game. I even thought about picking like 17, 14. Like it's going to be very low score. I'm going to go with 20 to 17. Raiders win this game, and the Bears drop another one. Um, and you know. This is just where the season's going. I wish I could be wrong about this, and I hope I'm wrong about this, and uh, I would love if the Bears won this game. But, uh, yeah, the Raiders win 20-17 to and close one at home uh, against Chicago. So let me know what you guys think, man. Leave a comment down below. As always, thanks for watching.